sings your praise. Great is the King of Kings.
Psalms 27 verses 5 to 7, we see here King David saying, He will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon a rock, and now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Verse 7, King David said, Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious to me and answer me. Here we see King David continually entrusting his life to the Lord. He depended on God for his safety and security. And that is why to us, brothers and sisters, as we uh, go through these trials and testings and challenges of life, let us continually entrust our lives to the Lord. For He promised He will never leave us nor forsake us. And that God, in God, nothing is impossible. Kung meron man tayo mga, mga problema sa buhay, idulog natin sa Panginoon. Tayo magpakumbaba at manalangin at hingin ang awa ng Diyos sa ating buhay. He even said, no, King David, that instead of worrying, or complaining, he will continually praise the Lord and offer sacrifices of joy. Why? Because he is confident that God will heal him, provide for him, you know, protect him from all troubles. In verse 7, we see here that David is so sure that when he cry to the Lord, God will hear it and the Lord will be gracious to him and will answer his prayers. Let us all bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace that you have showered upon our lives. We pray, O Lord, that as we humble ourselves before you, you will intervene and bring healing, protection, and Lord God, uh, provision upon our lives. Panginoon, dadangin ko sa aking mga kapatid na nakakaranas ng paghihirap, Palakasin mo sila, Panginoong Jesus, sa kanilang pag-iyak sa iyo, sa, iyo, sa kanilang pagdulog sa iyo. Sagutin mo, Panginoong Jesus, ang kanilang mga panalangin. We thank you for your love. We praise you and honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Again, uh, a blessed Sunday everyone. We would like to welcome you to our online Victory Worship Service. Alam ko po na marami sa inyo ay lagi kaming sinasamahan sa online worship service namin as we continue to uh, honor the Lord and listen to His Word. Well, this Sunday we are going to continue our preaching series that we have entitled Generation We. No, every year we set aside two Sundays to talk about the importance of reaching uh, the next generation. And that is why uh, today, no, as we continue, we will uh, uh, listen to Matthew Tungpalan. No, uh, ang kanyang uh, ipipreach ay fan the flame. Yan nga po, no, because we would like to continually have that passion to reach the next generation with the gospel so that we will be able to disciple the future leaders of our nation. So uh, today, you know, let us uh, prepare our hearts to listen to Matthew. You know, Matthew is a graduate of BS uh, Public Administration and Legal Management at St. Paul's University in 2018. He's now our uh, intern campus missionary uh, leading our uh, campus men discipleship program. And next year, he's going to attend our School of Campus Ministry sa Manila po. So again, no, prepare our hearts to receive the word from uh, Matthew Tungpalan. Right? 
Hello, Victory to Gigaraw! My name is Matthew Tumpalan. I'm a campus missionary intern from Victory to Gigaraw or Every Nation Campus to Gigaraw, the youth arm of our church. And ngayon, I'm so excited to get to share for the first time sa ating Sunday worship service. Ayan, so kamusta kayo? Uh, Nag-start na pong ECQ natin. Uh, it's a really challenging time and I know that we have so many struggles, marami po tayong worries para dito sa ano, marami tayong iniisip para dito sa mga susunod na weeks. Pero uh, we get to share together, we're here today to hear messages of hope. Ayan, we're going to continue today our series called Generation We. So si ate nga, ang ate ko last week na si Janina Karag, she started the series uh, looking at where we draw our strength from. Sinasabi niya nga dito na as we wait on the Lord, He will renew our strength. Ayan, so... Uh, to talk a little about myself, ayun nga, I'm Matty Tumpalan. I'm actually a third generation Christian. Ayan, so, uh, yung lolo ko po, uh, si lolo ko na si Didoy Bulawan, he was a pastor of Soul Winners for Christ Fellowship. Ayan, he was a great spiritual father. He's still one of my biggest influences and role models in life. He was uh, a great biological and spiritual father to my aunts, to my uncles, to my mom and to his congregation as well. Ayan. So, siya yung first generation, yung second generation, sumunod na uh, my parents, si Melcher at si Minda, who were worship leaders, pero sometimes, yan, lately lang, pinalid ulit sila ng worship. Ayan. And they still continue to mightily and faithfully serve in church. Ayan. And then, sumunod na yung generation ko, I was brought to victory to Gigaraw by my uncle, ayan, by my uncle Mel, and Ang, together with my ate Janina, those two people, si uncle ko and si ate, they were the ones who really invested their time and their efforts into allowing me to realize my purpose and my calling in life. Ayan. And, uh, ayan talaga, I've been attending Victory to Gigaraw since I believe I was about three years old or two and a half years old. Yan. So, sobrang young ko pa nung pumunta ako sa Victory when I was brought there. And, some of my earliest new my, some of my earliest memories in Victory were uh, winning yung church na Christmas party, yung kids' church na Christmas party. Naka-costume party kami. Uh, nanalo ko yung costume ko was, uh, I, <laughs> I dressed up as Judas Iscariot at the time. Hindi ko pa alam ko nung kwento niya. Ayan, basta alam ko astig kasi may tali akong dala. Ayan, and then uh, another one of my earliest uh, church memories was going to church in a suit and a tie tapos hawak-hawa ko yung Bible ni Lolo. Yan. Ang, fer- ang very first Bible ko was Lolo's Gideon Bible, which was color gold. Ayan. I think I still have it. Ayan. So, I've been in victory for a long time. Uh, I've been in church for a long time. And, ayan, lately I've been thinking about this line. This is an African proverb which says, It takes a village to raise a child. Ayan. It takes a village to raise a child. And every time that I think about where I am today, what I'm able to do, ayan, I I always appreciate the people who allowed me to come to this place, who allowed me to get to this point in my life. I wouldn't be a, a worship leader, a victory group leader, I wouldn't be a part of the church staff if not for all the people who brought me to a place where I could meet Jesus. Ayan. It hasn't been easy getting here, pero I know that it wouldn't have been possible without the people who were in my life. And now, this is my point to all of you. This is something that I want to leave with all of you. The mission of bringing our children, our nephews, grandkids, cousins, siblings, and campuses to the knowledge of Jesus is not just the solo mission of our campus missionaries. You have to take note, it's not just our job. We are ever grateful to the people who made it possible for us to be doing what we're doing today. And it is my hope that as we study today's topic, each one of us will be steered to that per- to be that person for the next generation. And so, this is not just the job of campus missionaries to do campus ministry. We all can have a part to play. And so, let me re- lead you to our verse which comes from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 5 to 14. Ang sabi dito, I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And now I am sure dwells in you as well. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God 
who saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of His own purpose and grace, which He gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, and which now has been manifested through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For which I was appointed a preacher and apostle and teacher, which is why I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. Follow the pattern of the sound words that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. By the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, guard the good deposit entrusted to you. Let me lead you in prayer. Lord, we thank you for this Sunday. We thank you for this word that you have given us. Uh, we pray, O oh God, that we will receive this, O oh Lord, and we will learn together that we are to take part in reaching the next generation. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, because you have given us a calling to pass on that baton to, uh, uh, to Generation Alpha, to Generation Z, who will carry on the values of today and make them the values of tomorrow. We pray, O oh Lord, that we will not take this responsibility lightly. Lord, we pray, O oh God, that we will take part in that calling to reach, Lord God, the next generation, to reach the campuses, to reach, O oh God, ang aming mga pamangkin, ang aming mga anak, ang aming mga apo, and everyone around us, O oh God. We pray, O oh God, that we will be a force, O oh Lord, who will work to bring these people into the knowledge of who you are, O oh God. To bring them, O oh God, to a place where they can encounter you and to learn, O oh God, that they have a purpose, that they can change the campus and change the world. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you anoint the preaching of your word today. We thank you, O oh Lord, that this is the word that we are about to receive. We thank you, O oh Lord, because victory is devoted not just to reaching families, not just to reaching people who are uh, in positions of power, not just people, O oh God, who are already well off or already who are already advanced in years, but we really have a calling to reach the next generation, O oh Lord, believing that this is what we have been placed on earth for. To realize your calling for them, your purpose for each of their lives, even if they can't see it, even if we can't see it yet. So Lord, we thank you for today. Bless the preaching of your word in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And so, <clears throat> uh, today, I'd like to greet siyempre ang ating mga viewers Ayan, medyo late na greeting And I'd like to greet our viewers from Facebook Ayan, from our RBC Cable Master, mga nanonood sa TV And of course, our viewers on YouTube Medyo tumataas ang views natin sa YouTube Ayan, ako rin, dun din ako nanonood Pero ayan, I'd like to greet you all Welcome to our service Ayan, so, kanina we looked at a passage from the first chapter of Second Timothy Which is Paul's second letter to Timothy. Yan, kaya siya second Timothy. And now, ito, just a little background. Si Timothy, he was a young pastor. Uh, nagsaserve siya, actually, nagmi-minister siya to uh, Ephesus. Ayan, mga, nung time na sinulat ni Paul, he was serving for, he has been, he had been serving for about four years na. Ayan, so, four years na siyang pastor dun. He was still young, relatively young talaga. And uh, Paul wrote this letter to him. Yan. Ang relationship kasi ni Paul at saka ni Timothy, si Paul, he died single. Ayan, hindi siya nagkaroon ng asawa, hindi siya nagkaroon ng anak. Pero ang turing niya kay Timothy is that he saw Timothy as his own son. Ayan, ang, ang treatment niya sa kanya is that he was like a spiritual father. Uh, a spiritual son niya si Timothy. Ayan, so, si Paul, matagal niya nakasama rin si Timothy. He knew Timothy from when he was very young. Uh, they ministered together to different places. They raised churches together. At this point in Paul's life, nung sinulat niya na tong letter na to, he was, impre he was imprisoned in Rome. Under the rule pa yan ni Emperor Nero, who was one of the most tyrannical leaders in Rome's history. Ayan, and nung time na to, nakulong ulit si Paul. This was not his first imprisonment. Pero at this point, malapit na siya mamatay. Ayan, he was about to be executed. At alam ni Paul na he didn't have much time left. He was actually getting sick. Yung, yung place kung saan siya na ano, yung kulungan niya, it was actually very cold and very damp. So, ayan, naiintindihan niyo, parang kinokovid na si Paul. Ganyan kung ano-ano na ang nararamdaman niya at pinagdadaanan niya. And he wrote this letter 
knowing na marami sa mga nag-serve kasama siya, those who used to preach together with him, they had fallen away from the faith. Nung nakita nila kung anong pinagdadaanan ni Paul, they began to doubt, totoo ba may calling ba talaga si Paul? Totoo ba talaga na he was called to be an apostle, to be a preacher? Bakit puro paghihirap naman pinagdadaanan niya? Paulit-ulit naman siya nakukulong para sa calling niya kuno. Yan. So, si Paul, he had that concern. Alam niya na mawawala na siya and he would have to leave Timothy behind. So, he wrote this letter pleading with the spiritual son to come visit him one last time and to encourage and empower him for his ministry and all of the challenges that lay ahead. Alam niya that it would not be easy standing up for what was right and continuing to fulfill his calling sa setting na meron sila. Many others had fallen away. So he had to write this letter. Today we will look at how Timothy came to be who he was. Kung paano siya naging, kung sino nga ba siya. How did he come to have that great faith na kahit bata pa lang siya, he was already a pastor, ministering to such a big uh, to such a big church. Ayan. And how Paul encouraged Timothy to keep on going and to blaze even stronger. Ayan. So, let me lead you. Basahin po natin ulit ang verse 5 ng 2 Timothy chapter 1. Sabi dito, I am reminded of your sincere faith a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you as well. So, sinasabi dito ni Paul na uh, si Timothy, like me, he was also a third generation Christian. Uh, before him, yung lola niya at saka ang mama niya, they were also followers of Christ, and they learned, and, and they really raised up Timothy uh, in the knowledge of the scriptures, ayan, pinakilala talaga nila, they really introduced Jesus to him. They put him in a place where he could encounter Jesus personally and come to, and become a man of great faith and to really become a person who is filled with the Holy Spirit. Ayan, sinasabi nga dito, Paul pointed out that Timothy's great faith, yung great faith na meron siya, it dwelt first in his grandmother and mother. Nagsimula dun sa kanyang lola at kanyang nanay. The same faith that he has first dwelt in them. Ayan. So, I've always been thinking about that. Na something so amazing. Hindi, ako, as someone who is third generation, a third generation Christian, I grew up in church. I got to know a lot of, stu a, a lot of uh, fellow kids church attendees. Ayan, na nakasama ko hanggang YS. Na anak din sila ng mga Christians. And, Believe me, hindi po, hindi po totoo na belief na kapag anak ka ng Christian, madali. To be honest, it's harder to get to know Jesus po talaga na uh, as someone na anak ng Christian. Kasi para you get to hear ito, naririnig mo ng pangalan ni Jesus from batang bata ka pa. You take for granted kung ano yung sineshare sa inyo ng parents mo. Pero you know what? I'm still very thankful kasi at the times when I began to doubt my faith, when I was starting to give up on Jesus, especially no nasa high school ako, I always remembered kung ano yung nag ni uh, nila mama sa akin. At times when I wanted to give up, I could hear the still small voice of Jesus, which was introduced to me. Yan, pinakilala sa akin from batang bata pa. I'm thankful that I was put in a place where I could get to meet Jesus pa rin. Ayan, and ayan, uh, actually while I was preparing this word, I... I remembered a story that I heard from one of our uh, members. Ayan. Her name is Ate Kaiza, Ate Kaiza Mangalaw. Ayan. I was able to attend yung uh, wake ng papa niya na si Tito Butz who used to serve as one of our... Ayan, taga-welcome po siya dati sa aming 10 a.m. service. I remembered na ano, kapag mag-lead po ako ng worship sa ating a.m. services, he would always be so cheerful. Ayan, laging kinakamusta kami. He would always say hi, he would always say hello. And uh, when I was able to visit yung wake niya, he unfortunately passed away uh, a few years back. And I was able to hear yung kwento ni Ate Kaiza about sa buhay niya and uh, yung faith niya para sa kanya. <clears throat> so si Ate Kaiza at si Tito Butz, uh, they didn't have a great relationship as father and daughter uh, from the very beginning. Ayan, nagkaroon ng problems. Ayan, uh, si Tito, he didn't have a lot of time to be a good father kay Ate Kaiza, especially sa kanyang earlier years. But then in 2013, he met Jesus, he encountered Jesus, he was able to attend victory. Ayan, and sobrang on fire siya, sobra yung faith niya talaga na he 
continue to convince yung children niya, mag-attend kayo ng church, ayan, punta kayo ng victory, ayan, kilalanin niya si Jesus, he continued to pray for them, he continued to push them, ayan, pero si Ate Kaiza talaga, parang ano, she was in a, in a place talaga na rebellious, ayan, alam naman natin, ayan, maraming mga uh, familiar dito sa feeling na to na nasa rebellious phase, parang, ano yan, ano yan, parang ayan, ako rin mismo, there were times na I didn't want to attend church, pero ayan, Kwento nga ni Ate Kaiza na because of her relationship with her father, kung gaano ka-strained yun, she found it really hard to believe na transformed na yung papa niya, na truly may faith na siya in Jesus, na nagbago na nga talaga siya. Pero uh, it once happened na there was a time na si Ate Kaiza, she was in her room, nakabalat siya ng kumot, and mukha siya natutulog. At ano nangyari, pumasok si Tito Butz dun sa kwarto niya. And thinking that she was asleep, he laid his hands on her and prayed for her. Ayan, so, sabi nga ni ate, naaalala niya pa yung prayer, and I noted it here, in prayer niya, Lord, I pray that my little Kaiza will forgive me, na lahat ng pagkukulang ko sa kanya, mapatawan niya. I pray, Father, that you will give her a new heart and new spirit, that you will remove her heart of stone and give her a new heart of flesh and a new spirit. This led to her getting to know Jesus, growing in her relationship with her father and the father. Ayan. And standing secure today in God's love even though uh, Tito Butz has already passed away. When he prayed for her, kanya, yun talaga, she began to question, Lord, totoo ba talaga ito na may relationship na kaya ng papa ko? Ayan. And then, uh, it really began there. Uh, she got to know Jesus. One of the first things that happened, uh, she let go of a relationship that Jesus was telling her to let go of. And then, sobrang naging papa talaga sa kanya, naging good na father talaga sa kanya si Tito. They really grew in their relationship. He took her out to dates. Ayan, may picture nga. Actually, dito yung first date nila to Zarks. Ayan, uh, they went on adventures together. Uh, he gave her a lot of advice. He really pushed her to become who she is today. At yan nga, sabi niya, she really saw the love of a father na dun sa kanyang papa na talaga. And even today na wala na siya, she continues to enjoy a relationship with her Heavenly Father. Because yung papa niya, he really made sure that she would, alam mo yan, she, he prayed and he prayed that his children would get to know Jesus truly. Taya niya po, she continues to live in faith, believing talaga for what her Heavenly Father is still able to do to provide for them and to protect them. But it began with the faith of her father. Ayan. Personally, <clears throat> I think about that a lot. And I know that I am not a Christian today dahil lang Christian ang parents ko. I know na hindi dahil saved sila, ibig sabihin automatically saved na rin ako. <clears throat> but I'm thankful because their faith, yung persistence din ng parents ko in praying for me, for God's purpose to be realized in my life. For me to find myself in a place where I could encounter the Jesus that had changed their lives as well. I know that their faith has brought me here. Alam nyo, kahit na hindi ko masasabi na I was saved because of my parents, it is because of their faith that I am here today. And, and one note that I want to leave with you guys today, it is not in our power to soften hearts and transform lives. But we can take part in leading this next generation to the one who can. Yan. Hindi natin kapangyarihan na bumago ng buhay. Pero we can have the faith to push this next generation, to put them in a place where they can encounter the Jesus that changed your life as well. Ayan. So, in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 6 and 7, ayan, we continue to look through yung passage kanina. Sabi dito, For this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Uh, this past year, I have had the privilege of getting to coach uh, three grade 12 students who are real-life scholars. And scholars po sila na ating Real Life Foundation. And, uh, and one of these three students is a student named Michael. He used to be uh, a grade 12 student of Tugigraw City Science High School. Ayan. So, matalino to. Ayan. And I got to speak to him. Uh, one time po kasi he wasn't able to attend one of our meetings, one of our coaching. So, nangyari po, uh, nag-schedule po kaya I had to schedule a separate meeting with him na one-on-one -on -one lang namin. So, nag-start kami, ayan, uh, nag-catch up lang. Kamusta ka? Uh, kamusta requirements mo? How are you doing? 
uh, what has been keeping you busy, busy lately. Ayan, so, I got to know him a little. Ayan, we talked a lot. And then, eventually, I asked him kung may plans na ba siya for college, if he had a vision for what he wanted to be, what he, uh, what he was going to do. <coughs> and, uh, si Michael, he opened up to me about his burden na actually hindi niya pa talaga alam. Hindi niya pa alam kung anong course na kukunin niya. Hindi niya alam kung saan siya mag-aaral. Ayan, he didn't really know what to do. Pero, he told me about something that God had been impressing in his heart for uh, the past years. Na talagang there was one time na uh, he heard a sharing an exhortation during their monthly scholars update na sobrang na yung heart niya and he was thinking about it while he was walking home and for the first time God was trying to tell him something talaga na uh, he wanted him to go into the field of education nagturo talaga maging teacher uh, in specializing in mathematics and ayun din parang naririnig niya rin na once tinanong na rin siya ng parents niya about it ayan uh, gusto mo ba mag education parang yan tinanong lang siya na without prompting hindi niya pa kinikwento sa kanila pero he always had this doubt in the back of his mind na pinipigilan talaga siya to make the decision to commit himself na wow uh, I'll be a teacher ayan he doubted yung social skills niya he really struggled with finding the words to say ayan po sa totoo nga po sa meetings namin he's really shy he's really quiet and kapag pinapashare ko po siya, it's really difficult for him to find the right words to say. Ayan, meron siyang gustong sabihin pero he couldn't find a way to say it. Ayan. <clears throat> and ngayon, itong si Michael, uh, I talked to him and then I, I, I spoke to him after he shared that with me, after he opened up. I told him, bro, I believe na yung skills at yung love mo format na meron ka is not an accident. It's not a coincidence. I don't believe na ibibigayan ni Lord sa'yo kung walang purpose. And I also told him, I believe na itong ini-impress ni God sa heart mo ngayon. He doesn't give a desire in your heart or an idea na parang, alam mo yan na walang purpose. Ayan. Alam mo, it looks impossible. Parang, I, I was really challenging him. It looks impossible. It doesn't look like it's the right fit. Pero, alam mo, sometimes all you have to do is to trust God and say yes. I believe that God is calling you to take a leap of faith and to decide to step out of your comfort zone and trust Him. That is a word that I received in my own life and that was something that I really saw in Him. And I really challenged Him. Bro, I think you really have to trust God. I, I, I think you have to trust God. Put your faith in Him. Marami kang fears, marami kang doubts, but maybe that's what God is challenging you to do. Ngayon, I am so blessed lang to hear uh, in one of our previous meetings, bago lang yun, He shared that He's already enrolled in CSU. Ayan, he's about to take up edok. Ah, hindi pa rin nawawala yung doubts niya, yung fears niya, ganyan. Hindi pa rin nawawala yung pagdududa niya kung kaya niya ba talaga. But he decided to trust God with his yes. So, ayan. Uh, that's one thing that so, na sobrang breakthrough talaga that I've really been uh, blessed with a story that's really touched my heart this past 2021. And and uh, in Romans chapter 12, verse 6, ang sabi dito, Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. Uh, sabi kanina dun sa verse, uh, yung gift na meron si Timothy, which, is to, which he is to fan into flame, he received it by the laying on of hands. Itong process of laying on of hands, ayan, uh, in the Bible, it is a sign of committing a person to service or ministry or affirming yung calling nila in, nila in life. As spiritual parents, tayo, bawat isa sa atin, we have the capacity to be spiritual parents. Ang hope ko is that we take the time to carefully identify the gifts and calling that God has for our spiritual children. And to encourage them to use their gifts even when they don't see it. And so, this generation, they have gifts and they have callings. Sometimes it's hard to see them kapag nakikita nyo lang, parang naging nasa phone lang. Laging uh, nag struggle lang sila, parang bakit? Lagi silang galit, bakit parang lahat sila may pinagdadaanan. Pero you know what? Each one of them have a special gift and calling in their life. And one of the best things that we could do is to identify kung ano nga ba yung gifts na meron sila. Beyond just yung magaling sa mathematics, beyond just being good at music, uh, beyond just being good at the arts and being smart, ganyan, they also have gifts that are called to them that are very special to them for their season. I've really taken it as a challenge to me to identify talaga kung ano ang giftings ng iba't ibang yan, mga sa kaibigan ko, parang ayan I have a friend who's really quiet 
pero I I paid attention and I really realized that he's a good listener. He really pays attention to the things that you say. And he really observes how things are going. He he can tell the mood of the room. And I have met people who are really uh, empathetic pagdating sa mga kaibigan nila. They're really genuine. And you can tell that if you don't spend time with them. Yan talaga. We get to know the next generation and we uh, encourage them to use their giftings. Kahit na hindi nila nakikita, totoo ba? Yeah, may ganyan ba talaga ako? Alam mo yan? Uh, I used to joke with my brother kasi ang lumabas sa strengths finder niya is that strength niya ang empathy. Tapos totoo ba? Parang ginagayan ko siya. Pero I found out, yan, nakita ko kung paano siya with people and I've been encouraging him. Alam mo yan? When it comes to ano, someday you will, ngayon pa lang, kuya ka na sa next generation. Pero inaano ko talaga siya. Ayan. <clears throat> Embrace mo yung gift mo of empathy. Ayan, continue to care for people. Ayan, uh, look out for the Senate. Treat them not just as uh, your victory group members, but truly be a kuya to them. Get to know them. Ayan. And I came to know that because <laughs> when when I was also in that place, I didn't know that I had gifts. In fact, wala akong idea na magiging worship leader ako that I would, uh, that, that I would be doing what I am doing today. Alam mo yan? Uh, the person who identified yan na nakarinig sa akin na kumanta tapos pinush ako, mag, pasok ka na sabi niya, si ate ko yan, narinig niya lang ako kumakanta sa bahay walang wala lang and then I entered into the music ministry I'm able to serve as a worship leader now I, I can't believe that I get to do what I do today pero alam mo yan I needed yung kuya senates in my life to identify those gifts and to push me uh, to get out of my comfort zone and just take that leap of faith and trust God with what I had alam mo yan Kaya nga fan into flame yung sinasabi, you have to keep it alive. You have to uh, turn it from just embers into burning talaga na pieces of coal. Lumalagablab talaga na apoy. Yan yung sinasabi, manlalamig yung gifts na yan if you, don't, uh, if you don't use them. So that's what we need to do for the next generation. Empower them to use those gifts and to realize their calling in life. Sabi sa 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7, perhaps this is my favorite verse in this whole passage. Ang sabi, God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. They will be challenged to use those gifts. They will have doubts pagdating sa, totoo ba, kaya ko ba talaga to? Alam mo yan? Yung sarili kong adding, he doubted his gifts for music talaga. And he was thinking about all of the impossibilities pagdating dun sa school na naiisip niya na, na parang masyado mahirap to meron akong scoliosis, asthmatic ako hindi kaya ng finances natin na pumunta ako na Manila, magana pa ako ng lodging, yung tuition ko and expenses ko sa school, it's going to be too great pero sabi ko sa kanya when he had that talk, sabi ko talaga sa kanya bakit mauuna yung fear? we are privileged to be in a family that really backs up yung purpose natin, yung passions natin in life pero we can back you up by faith if you don't take that step of faith and that's one thing that I've been trying to do with my addings, with the people that I'm raising up as a spiritual father of sorts. Ayan, to the people that I'm leading to realize their callings, to realize their giftings, and to truly tell them to step out of their comfort zone and do things that they could not even imagine doing. God has given them a spirit of power and of love and self-control. They're going to be faced with temptations to give up, to be faced with temptations to uh, go somewhere na parang uh, this looks like an opportunity pero iiwan nila yung calling nila in life. But it is our goal to identify those gifts and to empower them to use them. While the generation today feel unsure, we can point them from fear to faith. It is God who gives each one their gifts, but we can take part in encouraging the next generation to embrace theirs despite doubt and difficulties. Kahit na hindi nila nakikita kung ano meron sila, kung ano binigay ni God sa kanila, we can take part in encouraging them to use their gifts, to embrace theirs despite all of their doubts and difficulties. <clears throat> 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12-14 so Paul was talking about what he was going through. He was proving to Timothy na yung pinagdadaanan niya, his imprisonments, his sufferings, are not, uh, are, are not meant to debunk yung kanyang calling. Kasi ang belief ng iba, dahil pinagdadaanan niya yun, wala, siyang, wala talaga siyang calling. Alam mo yan, they began to doubt him kung saan ministry siya. Pero he was telling Timothy, this is not something that should cause you to doubt. This is proof that this is my calling. 
Sabi niya, which is why I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed for I know whom I have believed and I am convinced that he is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. Follow the pattern of the sound words that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. By the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, guard the good deposit entrusted to you. It wasn't easy getting to the point where I am today. Alam niyo, sa totoo lang, if you told me maybe a year or two ago that I would be <laughs> serving full-time in the ministry, that I would be doing what I am doing today, alam mo, parang <laughs> siguro tatawanan kita. Parang ganyan, siguro tatawanan kita. And I, I was a problem student in high school. Ayan. I studied in Pisay for three years and then I got kicked out. Ayan, nagloko talaga ako. Pagdating ko ng fourth year, lumipat ako sa Cagayan High. At ang nangyari, hindi pa rin ako tumino. Ayan, na-enjoy ko yung company ng barkada ko. Ayan, I cut classes. I got into a secret relationship na, alam mo yan, na sobrang tinago ko sa parents ko. Ayan, and then, ayan, it, it, it really wasn't a good time. Then I got into college and although... I already surrendered my life to Jesus. There was a lot of struggles pa rin. Ayan, I really struggled as a leader. I struggled as... Uh, I, I struggled to do one-to-one -one talaga uh, with other people. And it got to the point na I was struggling with depression and I almost stopped attending all of my classes altogether in my fourth year in college. I almost didn't graduate. And even after napagdaanan ko yan, ayan... I was able to get a job, but then I left that job. Wala akong ka-fallback, fallback. Hindi ko alam kung anong pupuntahan ko, hindi ko alam kung anong gagawin ko. Pero, ayan, I, I, was, I was without a job for over a year. Pero to get to this point today, it really took a lot of faith. I learned a lot of things along the way. Sobrang ang daming times na nag-fail ako. I failed many times. Pero one thing that I remind myself is that, the same God who called Paul to the ministry even when he was an enemy of the gospel. He was considered an enemy. Ayan. And the same God who empowered him to continue ministering even while imprisoned, even during his suffering, is the same God that has called me to do something I think I'm not best suited for. And the same God who is empowering me to step out of my comfort zone and learn to lead from scratch. A lot of the time, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm figuring it out along the way. Ayan. Uh, there were also times na I really didn't have uh, a spiritual father to lead me. Ano, parang I'm really unsure with what, with what I'm doing at times, pero God is reminding me, you're called to do this. You're not a cookie-cutter campus missionary, pero none of you are. You have your own unique calling, you have your own unique ministry. And I really learned to trust God with my calling Sa times that I spent with the with the kuyas and ates that I have in my life, I've been privileged to get to speak to people like, ayan, si Kuya Mulong, Bunagan, ayan, sobrang ang dami niyang inimpart sa buhay ko. Uh, I really accepted my calling and went for it. Uh, from talks nung in-encourage talaga ako ni Kuya Mike Kalimag, ayan, I'm able to do what I'm doing today dahil sa, I'm able to trust God dahil sa mga kwento na na-receive ko, encouragements that I received from my own ate, ayan. I really saw how God was moving, what God was trying to tell me, what, and I truly believe that I could do even things that I could not imagine doing for His sake dahil sa buhay na na-share sa akin. Ayan. I saw God's persistence with how much my Ate Janina invested in me. She registered me to so many campus conferences. Ayan, kompleto ko lahat ng Ignite hanggang unashamed. Ayan, and, I, and she continued to uh, invite me to attend youth services ayan, kahit na hindi ko feeling na part ako ng church at that time ayan, and then I was able to see how God cared for me at the time nung na-COVID ang dalawa naming parents at kaming dalawa lang ni Mike sa bahay and the very first day na wala yung parents namin dito sa house, si Kuya RK he sent over takoyaki para uh, para merienda namin ni Ading and he asked us how we were doing and I really felt how God was caring for us and then I really felt God's love during this season of my transition into uh, becoming a full-time campus missionary talaga. And I was really scared. I was doubting. Siyempre, ko, I'm going to fail a lot of times. Alam mo yan, 
uh, I'm ge I'm going to get things wrong. I I really don't know a lot of the time what I'm doing, and I was scared. Na parang alam mo yan, I would be rejected. Um, I would I I I I would get scolded dahil sa ano ko. Pero you know what? In the in the whole time that I've been serving, God gave me the privilege of having ates, kuyas, fathers and mothers who have been patient with me and have treated me like a son in my time in the full time ministry. I'm so blessed to have ates like Ate Erna, Ate Marie. Ayan, sobrang ang caring sa akin na lahat ng mga kasama ko ngayon sa ministry and I've really felt how God was pushing me into this life, was encouraging me to pursue my calling in life dahil sa buhay na na-share sa akin. I've learned to dare to live as a, follow, as a follower of Christ even when it felt impossible by the example of God's word embodied in the lives that have been shared with me. Ayan. It wasn't the Bible verses that they could quote. It was by how they embodied Jesus how they lived. So to the next generation, alam ko marami dito sa words ko kanina, they were aimed towards our spiritual fathers and mothers, pero this is something that I want to tell you. As someone who finds himself living out yung calling that he could not imagine even doing, this is my encouragement to you. To the youth today, you are not alone. Sabi sa Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, my God will supply all your needs according to His glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Even di, kasama dito sa needs na to are the people that you need for each season. Even though you will lose friends along the way, you will lose touch, God is going to give you exactly the right people you need for your season. And I know that dahil sa seasons na pinagdaanan ko, and I'm able to share this today to the next generation. Second thing I want to share to you guys, things are not lost. Hindi, hindi pa tapos hanggat hindi sinasabi ni Lord na tapos ka na. Lamentations 3, 21-24 This I call to mind and therefore I have hope because of the Lord's great love we are not consumed for His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for Him. And this is my encouragement to you guys. Kahit na feeling nyo wala kayong direction, kahit na feeling nyo ang layo-layo nyo na kay God, Kahit na matagal na kayong pinipilit mag-attend at ngayon nyo pala naririnig to, this is my reminder to all of you, things are not lost. Hindi pa tapos hanggat hindi pa tinatapos ni Lord. Amo yan. I've had so many mistakes in life but God never gave up on me and I'm sure that that same God will not give up on you as well. Psalm 27 verses 13 and 14, Yet I am confident I will see the Lord's goodness while I am here in the land of the living. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. Believe for the impossible. Kahit na parang patay na patay na yung grades, kahit na parang hindi mo na alam kung paano pabubuhayin yung victory group mo, continue to believe for the impossible. God is not done with you yet. Kahit na wala kang group ngayon, kahit na feeling mo sobrang alone ka, God is not done with you yet. Things are not lost. And the last thing that I want to leave with you, dare to trust God. Philippians 4.13 I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Kahit na hindi mo nakikita yung calling mo, kahit na you're not willing to step out of your comfort zone yet, you know what? Dare to trust God. It is in impossibilities, it is in uh, uncomfortable situations that you will truly see kung gaano nga ba ka-powerful si Lord. is able to make a way even when there is no way. Tulad niya na sabi niya, he is about to do a new thing. Is to make a way in the wilderness. Is to make rivers spring up in the desert. Alam mo, it's a reminder to all of us, dare to trust God. Maybe that maybe you're struggling with making a decision for college. Maybe hindi mo alam kung saan ka talaga papatungo. Maybe God is calling you to do something, to reach out to one of your friends, to invite them to attend youth service. Maybe the, you have a lot of doubts today, but you know what? Dare to trust God. Hindi mo na alam kung papasok ka pa, pero dare to trust God. Hindi mo alam kung paano huma-afford yung school na yun, but dare to trust God. Today, that's what I want to leave you. You are Gen Z and Gen Alpha. You are tomorrow's leaders, teachers, engineers, doctors, marami pa, worship leaders, missionaries, fathers, and mothers. But your calling can go beyond just a mere title or status in life. Alam mo, you have been called for something. 
we believe that you have been made for a purpose. Kahit na hindi mo nakikita ngayon, we dare to believe for all of you as well. We dare to believe for your calling. We dare to believe that even though ngayon you feel lost, even though in, even though nagda-doubt ang tao sa kung sino ka, they take no regard of you even if they don't listen. You know what? We, yung generation na nauna sa inyo, your kuyas, your ates, your fathers and mothers in church, we continue to dare to believe for your purpose and your calling in life. That God has called you to do. We dare to believe that as we pray, invest, empower, and instruct the next generation, God is at work transforming your generation to change the campus and change the world. We all have a part to play in this. The values that we get to impart to you today, the way that we build you up so you can realize your purpose in life. Alam nyo, hindi lang namin yan sinasabi so you hear something good. We truly believe in your calling. I wouldn't be doing the work that I'm doing today if I did not believe in generation ngayon, even though they are dismissed, even though they feel like they're just uh, always speaking to nothing, even though they feel unheard, even though they feel unappreciated. You know what? I believe in your calling. And I dare to trust God to mold you into the man and woman He's always called you to be. So let me pray for all of us. Lord, we thank you for this word that you've given us. Lord, I pray na lahat kami will have that burden in our hearts to truly reach out this next generation. Lord, we pray, O oh God, that we will truly embody now the love, the care, the eyes that you have for each of them. Teach us, Lord, to have eyes, to see them, not just as another person who is part of this generation, not just as another Twitter user or Facebook user, not just as another voice or face in the crowd. We pray, O oh God, that we will see them as your children. We will see them as people who are filled with purpose, who are called to do so much more than they can imagine, than we can imagine. Lord, we pray, O oh God, let us embody this calling, O oh Lord, knowing that the best way to lead them to Jesus is not to point out how much they are wrong, but how much they are loved. We thank you, O oh Lord, that you have not given up on this generation. You have not given up, O oh Lord. Alam ko na marami, marami ka pang gagawin. So many exploits are still about to be done in each of their lives. And we pray, O oh Lord, that you will take part in reaching out that next generation and bringing them to the knowledge of you, O oh Lord. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will not stand silent because you have not given us a spirit of timidity. You have not given us a spirit of fear, but you have given us a spirit of power and of love and of self-control. We pray, O oh Lord, that we will go beyond our means. We will reach them, O oh Lord. Kahit na hindi nila sinasagot, hindi sila nagre-react sa mga tinatag, hindi nila sinisin ang messages. We pray, O Lord, that we will be persistent in faith. We pray, O Lord, that we will take the time, O Lord, to see them for who they are in your eyes. We pray, O Lord, that we will get to share our lives and encourage them to get through what they're going through. It's not easy. Lahat ng requirements, lahat ng adjustments that they have to make, lahat ng struggles na meron sila with their relationships, the struggles that they have, O Lord, mentally, physically, emotionally. We pray, O Lord, that we will take part not belittling what they are going through, but telling them, keep on, press on towards the goal to which you have been called. And Lord, we pray, O oh God, for this next generation, para sa mga nanonood ngayon, who are still students, who are still very young, Lord, we pray, O oh God, give them the heart, O oh Lord, to dare to trust you for the impossible. We pray, O oh Lord, that you continue to remind them at every turn, no matter how far they think they are from you, remind them, O oh Lord, you are never lost. There is no place that you can go on earth, in your heart, in your mind where you will ever be too far away from the love and the presence of God. Lord, we pray, O Lord, that you will, that we will be able, O God, to reveal the truth, O Lord, of a Father who loves them, of a Father who understands, of a Father who sees and takes note of their tears and their prayers in the night. Lord, we pray, O Lord, to remind them, O Lord, we, we pray, O Lord, that we will be of use to remind them that they are not alone, that they are not serving uh, nothing, that they are not for nothing, but they are made for a purpose. Lord, we pray, O Lord, that we will help them, O Lord, to continue to believe and to continue to dare greater and greater exploits to trust you for the impossible. Lord, we thank you for this word today, even as we close this series, O Lord. We pray, O Lord, that we will continue to move forward with that calling, O Lord, as we believe together with the whole of every nation and victory to reach out that next generation for 2021. We pray, O Lord, that we will go beyond. 
we will go beyond. Use us, O Lord, effectively as spiritual fathers and mothers, as good kuyas and ates, to see them for more than just their wrongdoings, but to see them as people that you loved and died for. That you have called for a purpose greater than what they can see or what we can see in them today. We bless you and we honor you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you for attending. See you again next week.
Happy Sunday everyone! For our reading, let me lead you to 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 14. It says, But who am I and who are my people, that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything comes from you, and we have given you only what comes from your hand. So, when we give back to God, we acknowledge that we have to give what came from Him in the first place. It is a great honor and a privilege to be in the workings of God. Let us meditate on this as we give today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you God for giving us the opportunity to bless you with our finances today. We acknowledge that everything we have is because of you, because of your provision and your rich generosity. I pray that every family, I pray that you would provide for every family even in this time of pandemic. Pray, thank you that you will keep us provided today and for the rest of our lives. In Jesus' name, Amen. There are three ways for you to give your tithes and offerings. First is by dropping your Titan offering from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. at Lighthouse Luna Street, second floor of the Home and Office Furniture, and at Victory Building Bagay Road in front of the EN Campus Office. Second, you can also give through direct deposit or bank transfer. Just message Ms. Erna Balobal for more details regarding this option. Or you can also give through GCash. Just scan the code posted here at Victory to Gigero page and send a screenshot of the transaction done through private message to Victory to Gigarao. The giving of the tithes and offerings are for Victory members only. If you are a guest, you are not obliged to give, but if you wish to do so, we pray that God will bless you. Thank you for your generosity. And as we end, may I now declare to you the blessings of the Lord found in Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 to 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. God bless you. Have a fruitful week ahead. In Jesus' name, Amen and Amen. Let's all stand and set aside all our fears, all our concerns, and focus on God as we worship Him today.
all pray. Dear Abba Father, thank you for you are our God who is sovereign and in control. Thank you that in you, nothing is impossible. We may be experiencing a difficult situation right now because of the enhanced community quarantine, but thank you that you remain our God who knows all things and sees all things and continually takes care of us and protects us from all harm and diseases. We pray for those who are having a hard time right now during the season. May your love and comfort and peace envelop them. And for those who are sick, we pray for your healing hand to be upon them. And for those who are hurting, may your love and comfort just embrace them. Lord, we commit this time of worship to you. We know that you are our God. And with you, nothing is impossible. And we thank you for the wonderful things that we will experience from you even during this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Another way we can worship God is through our giving. So you may give your tithes and offering by following the instructions flashed on the screen. Welcome to Kids Church for All Ages! My name is Teacher JC. And I'm Teacher Annika. First, we want to give a shout out to Hans Robels and Izuri Del Rosario. Hello! Hello! And to Kala Briel Ambrosio, Malik Cruz, and Aro Rasos. Hi! What's up? As you know, we are on the second week of our series called Jesus BC. But if it's your first time attending, here's a short recap of what our series is about. Yes. This series, we will be exploring the different appearances of Jesus in the Old Testament, the time when He wasn't born yet. These appearances are called... That's correct! Christophanies! Yes. Last week, we learned that Jesus appeared to Hagar and revealed Himself as the God who sees us. Speaking of impossible, did you know that it is impossible to crack an egg in one pound? What? Don't believe us? You know what? We're going to challenge people around the building to try and crush an egg with their palm. They can even wow. use two palms, but I bet they can do it. It's going to be an impossible challenge. All right, are you, okay. are you teacher Annika? <laughs> I am teacher Annika. Yes. Are you teacher JC? <laughs> yes, yes, I am. Are you ready, teacher Annika? Yes, I am ready. So, right. let's go. Oh. Hi, kids. It's me, teacher Annika. And behind the camera is teacher JC. Oh. <laughs> so, hello. And now we are at the ground floor of our building. And we just have here our first challenger, teacher Aya. Just in one palm. You think you can do it? Oh, yes. Okay, let's see. Just put your hand inside. And then you punch in all your power. So giving it your own? Give it, come on. Oh, Did you do it? Oh, yes, baby, yes. The third one will be really good. Oh, you can. Oh, you can. Oh. Alright. You can do it, Kalen. But thank you, Teacher Jason. Thank you. So let's go to our next challenger. Hello again. So now we are in our Every Nation Campus office. Okay. Uh, a little tour. And here we have Coach Jake, our second challenger. Hello. Coach Jake, you just need to crack this up. Alright. In one pump. You think you can do it? Yes. Yes, yeah, that's can. it. Okay, let's try. Let's see if Coach Jake mm. you can crack the egg. Use all your power. All the stress. <laughs> You're really giving it your all? Yeah. No! <laughs> it's still not breaking. Okay, one more, one more. One more, last one. Three, two, one. Ah! No! <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Jake. Come on, Jake. Come on, Jake. 
Kind of scale the challenge, but see if it is really impossible to crack that egg in one time. Or you, you want to do it with your both hands? Both hands. Both hands. Put, put your hands down just in case. Alright, then you can use both your, your palms. Nope. <laughs> Look at this hand! Look at his fingers! It's looking red. Alright, it's a no. Yay, challenge! Hey yo. It's a real egg. And yeah, it's so strong. And completely. Okay, let's go to our next challenger. And now for our third and final challenger, we have your teacher Sacha. We are here in a worship services office. So hi teacher Sacha. You just need to so the challenge, you just need to crack this egg in one pump. Do you think you can do it? Yeah. Yes. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Do the challenge. Just put your hand inside the basket. Okay. Now, can do it. Are you doing it? Oh, your power. Are you? Are you already doing it? <laughs> Give it your own teacher, Sasha. Okay. Yes. Give it. Oh, look. Okay. You can use both. You can use both your hands if you want. Your nails. Yes. Yes. Use both of your hands. Oh, other hands, alright. Okay. Alright, let's see. Okay, let's see. Okay. Oh, other hands, alright. Okay. 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 All right, all right. I think you have to crack it just to just to prove that it's a real egg. Real. All right, okay. Teacher Daisy, uh, put it inside the plastic. <laughs> <laughs> put it inside the plastic, of course. All right, and then we're gonna crack the egg. Oh, there it is. it's a real. So it's egg. a real egg. Yes. All right. It's impossible to crack. Yeah. So good try, Teacher Sacha. Thank you, Teacher Sacha. Thank you. And thank you, kids. Now let's go back to our studio. That was really an impossible challenge. Who knew that this egg is so strong? Yeah, you know, it's, it's almost impossible to believe that something so fragile can be so strong. Well, teacher JC, that's what we'll be learning today. How God works in impossible situations. Alright, so with that, let's watch this video and listen, listen to the word. Have you ever wondered if God was with you right now? Like how Jesus was with the disciples, teaching and encouraging them through good times and bad. We're going to explore the Old Testament and discover how the whole story of the Bible is His story, the story of Jesus. And through some events wherein He reveals Himself to us, we will learn that Jesus is with us then, today, and tomorrow, forevermore. Hey, Kuy Harlow. Why do you have a baseball with you? Hey, Debs. Oh, baseball! Oh, my family were planning to go to the park! Wanna throw a ball, catch the, maybe kick the soccer ball, you know, yeah, run around. The park? Park? Really? In the midst of this quarantine? Come on! If I were you, I'd throw that back into my closet. And you know, just being realistic. I, I know, I know, it seems weird and maybe a bit impossible. Are you going through the same stuff with your family? Yeah, like, we had so much plans for this summer. Like, we were planning to go to the beach and swim, but... Ta-da! Guess what? Everything's cancelled. It's so hard to plan out for stuff like that these days. Everything is impossible. <sighs> impossible? All right. All right, let's talk about impossible stuff. We're going to dive into the life of Abraham and Sarah and see the impossible things God can do in their lives. Go. Let's go. So that's Sarah, huh? What's so funny? Why is she laughing? <laughs> well, remember that God promised them they would have a huge family? It's taken them so long to have a child. And that made Sarah laugh? Not exactly. It happened one hot day while Abraham was just chilling in front of his tent when the Lord appeared once again. When he looked up, 
he saw three angels, or messengers, sent by God to visit them. Abraham was so excited to see them, immediately invited them to stay with him. He offered them food, water, anything that would make them comfortable and strong enough for their journey. Wow, sounds like Abraham is about to throw a party for these visitors. I sure would if God visited me. Put on the music and celebrate! Yeah. <laughs> 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 alright, alright, alright. Okay, back to the story. While they were eating, one of God's messengers, whom the Bible calls the Lord, told him that about the same time next year, he and Sarah would have a son. Sarah overheard this from the tent and laughed at what he said. <laughs> That's what made her laugh? What's so funny about that? You see, Debs, both Sarah and Abraham were way old when these angels visited them. Like our parents old? Nope. More like our grandparents old. Whoa, now I see it. That is to laugh for. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's what Sarah thought. She said, I'm too old to have a baby. And the Lord heard all of this. He asked Abraham why Sarah laughed. He, uh, he said, is anything too hard for the Lord? No, I will return to you at the right time, a year from now, and Sarah will have a son. Yikes, Sarah must have been scared after hearing him say that. <laughs> she was, so she kind of lied and denied that she laughed. But the Lord knew she was lying and told her that she did laugh. Wait, he catches Sarah in a lie and still God's giving them his miracle baby? Well, the Lord is our promise keeper. Remember the promise to bless Abraham's descendants? And even if Abraham and Sarah started doubting this, God kept his promise to them, even if it sounded funny and impossible. Just like Jesus is God's promise keeper too. I think I get what you're trying to tell me, Kuya Carlo. You know, I easily get frustrated with the things when my plans aren't going so well or we, I don't get to see my friends anymore and not be able to go places anymore. But you know what? What I realize is that Jesus is the greatest proof that God is faithful. Right, exactly. God is faithful and He can make even the impossible things possible. So tune in next week We'll see more of Christ's cameos in the Old Testament. Hello everyone, my name is Pastor Brandel and I'm excited to share the word with you today. But first, I want to give a shout out to Rafa Cabral from Bulacan, Ziljan Turingan from Canada, and Casey Orivida. Today is our second week of our series, Jesus BC. And we'll be talking about Jesus does the impossible, which we will find in Genesis 18, 9 to 14. One day, Abraham was sitting by his tent when he saw three men standing nearby. It was the culture of the people in their area to always be hospitable or nice to their visitors, even to strangers. So Abraham ran to the strangers and invited them to his home. While they were eating the food Abraham's household prepared for them, they began talking. Now we pick up in Genesis 18, 9 to 14. It says here, Where is Sarah, your wife? The visitors asked. She's inside the tent, Abraham replied. In verse 10, Then one of them said, I will return to you about this time next year. Your wife, Sarah, will have a son. Sarah was listening to this conversation from the tent. Abraham and Sarah were both very old by this time, and Sarah was long past the age of having children. So she laughed silently to herself and said, How could a worn-out woman like me enjoy such pleasure, especially when my master, my husband, is also old? Then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? Why did she say, can an old woman like me have a baby? Is anything too hard? For the Lord, I will return about this time next year and Sarah will have a son. It seems like difficult for us to see where Jesus is, but those who really study the Bible, the scholars, those who really took time digging deeper in the Word of God, they say that it was actually Jesus who was talking to them. Check your Bible. In the word Lord in capital letters, meaning the person who gave the promise of a baby and said that nothing is too hard for the Lord, 
is actually Jesus. Jesus went on a mission on earth even before he was born. That's why you entitled this one, Jesus BC. We know it is him because he is often called the angel of the Lord in capital letters. Because Abraham's relationship with God, he eventually recognized that the Lord Jesus Christ as they had been talking. In our story, Jesus visited Abraham and promised that Sarah would get pregnant. Now that was an impossible thing because Sarah was already 90 years old. Imagine that, 90 years old, being pregnant. And at that time, Abraham was 100 years old. Imagine that, 90 years old and 100 years old, having a new baby. Elderly women don't get pregnant anymore. But nothing is impossible with God. He can make a promise and more than that, He is willing and able to fulfill that promise. No matter how impossible it seems, one year later, Sarah indeed gave birth to Isaac. So what does that tell us about Jesus? He went on a mission. He gave that promise that no promise is impossible for Jesus to fulfill. Can you say that again? No promise is impossible for Jesus to fulfill. When you read the Bible, you will find a lot of promises for God's people. Jesus promised things like protection, provision, peace, and many other things, not just those starting with letter P. But most of all, He promised forgiveness for our sins, which would mend our broken relationship with God and save our souls. All of Jesus' promises are born out of His deep love for us, deep love for His people and creation. Jesus never stops loving and helping His people even before He was born on earth. That is why whatever you are going through right now, you can claim Jesus' promises for you and you can be assured that He will fulfill it because He is faithful. Continue reading the Bible and learn about Him, learn about His promises, learn about His love, learn about His power to be able to fulfill those promises. As our power truth would say, Jesus never stops loving and helping me. We can hold on to that, that power truth that whatever it is, Jesus will never stop loving us and will never stop helping us. For our power verse, it says here, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, or anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8:38 to 39. Nor demons, neither the present or the future, nor any powers, powers. neither hide nor day, nor anything else in all creation be able to separate us from the love of God, from the love of God. Nor demons, neither the present or the future, nor any powers, powers. neither hide nor day.
Did you know that Abraham is actually Jesus' ancestor? By making the promise of giving Abraham a son, it would seem that Jesus was making sure that he would also be born on earth hundreds of years later. That is because Jesus is coming to earth meant that sinful man would finally be reconciled to God through Jesus' death and resurrection. That is what Jesus did for all of us. The Bible says that He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning. He is the end. It means that in the Old Testament, He was already present. He gave those promises. He made sure that He will be born. He will be part of our lives today. In the New Testament, He was born. He died on the cross for us. And today, we're able to enjoy Him and His promises for us. So always remember, nothing is too hard for Jesus. He did everything so that we can enjoy Him today and enjoy Him forever. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you, God, for you are the beginning and the end. We see in our series that, Lord, in, even in the Old Testament, you made a way for us to be in a relationship with you. You made a way for us to be loved by you. Thank you for loving us so much that you made all these promises for us, all these promises that are good for us, Lord. We pray, Lord, that um, you would increase our faith, God, that to claim this promise, Lord, it takes us believing in you that you can do everything. Lord, we thank you, God, for being faithful. And we can trust, God, that even in the hard times that we are facing today, we can hold on to who you are in our lives. We can hold on to your promises because you are always able and faithful to fulfill these promises. Thank you, God. We love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Bye-bye. Hello kids and welcome back to Craft Time with Teacher Plum. That's me. Happy birthday to Nicole from Europe and hello to Adizaya Liam Lagbas and Elle Treffery from Canada. Now I'm sure you're feeling pretty proud of the artworks that you made last week. I had so much fun seeing your masterpieces. Let's check them out. Last week, we made the emotion craft to remind us that Jesus sees us and meets us, whatever we are going through. We may be sad, happy, angry, excited. Whatever we are feeling, Jesus sees us and He is ready to meet us. Now, you and I learn that Jesus is true to His promises. A promise is something that someone says he or she will do in the future. It's sort of like a coupon. And that's our craft for today. We are going to make promises through coupons. To make this craft, we will need a pair of scissors, a piece of paper, I'm using some whiteboard paper. We'll also need some coloring materials. So I have markers and I have crayons. Let's begin. The first step that I am going to do is I am going to draw a squiggly line right on the left of my piece of paper. Like this. Next, over here in this part, I am going to put my name and I'm going to write promises. So I'm going to write Plum's Promises. Then at the bottom of Plum's Promises, I am gonna write the words, pick one. So later when I'm done with my craft, I can ask my family to just pick one coupon and I am gonna make sure that I will fulfill what's written on the coupon. The next thing that we want to draw, we are gonna draw rectangular shapes or elongated shapes on the right side of our piece of paper. So the first one that I'm gonna draw is a ribbon, like this. And think of other elongated shapes. We can draw a cloud, so I'm gonna draw a cloud. Let's draw a spiky shape like this. And for the last one, I'm just gonna draw a rectangle. And you should have something that looks like this. So we have one, two, three, four, five shapes over here. 
next step is within those shapes, write the promises that you want to make your family or friends. For example, the first one that I'm gonna write is, let's first put this coupon is a promise for me to water the plants. Now for our second coupon, I am gonna write help with the laundry. What else can we think of? For our third coupon, let's write, hmm, sweep the floor. For our fourth coupon, I am gonna write a 10 minute massage. I'm sure your dad or your mom would appreciate a 10 minute massage. And for the last one, I think I'm gonna put make a snack. Once we filled up all our coupons, we can now go ahead and start coloring them. So for the left part, I'm just gonna color it yellow all over. And then you can just add additional drawings or decorations or stickers on your coupons. And I'll be right back. So this is my finished product. As you can see, I put some flowers and I colored this one yellow and I drew some laundry clothes here on my second coupon, some leaves on the first one. Just decorate it in any way that you want. You can also add some stickers or maybe add some paint. And when you're finished, don't forget to present it to your family and tell them to pick one. So when your family picks one, they can just tear one off like this and they can keep the coupon for themselves and just claim it whenever they want a snack. Let these coupons remind you of God's promises, which are basically like coupons. He is sure to fulfill every single promise. Just like when God promised Abraham a son, he fulfilled it even if Abraham and Sarah were already very, very, very old. Nothing is impossible with God. And that's it for our craft time for today. If you want your photo to be featured next week, please send it over to our email address, kidsfort at victory.org.ph. All photos submitted by Monday, 5 p.m. will be one raffle entry for the month of August. See you soon, kids! Bye! Hey, wait a minute! Don't leave yet! It's Teacher Maylene! Hmm. Did you know that it is impossible to say Hmm, with your nose pinched? Try it! How about this? Did you know that it is impossible to tickle yourself? Try it! See? I bet you weren't tickled at all. Today we talked about the impossible. It seemed impossible for Sarah to get pregnant at 9 years old. But you know what they say, everything is possible with God, most especially the promises He has for us. For our family con, what is one promise from God that you would like to claim? It could be provision, joy, acceptance, protection, healing, or even wisdom. That's it for today. See you next week. Bye!